binoculars. You guys looked huge, really. Now, binoculars are great because you can see things super far away and they make them look pretty close. For example, in the bushes over there, I can see a small speck of something. Not quite sure what it is, so I'm gonna have a quick look. Ready? Let's have a look together. Oh my goodness, it's a drop bear. Oh my goodness. Oh. Well, binoculars aren't the only things that can help you see stuff cl more clearly. You can use microscopes and even telescopes that help you look at the night sky. All of these things help us keep focus. Focus. And that's what we're looking at this month. This month is all about focusing on something really important. And it's actually something you can't see. That's right. Something We're focusing on something you can't see. I am talking about faith. Now, you might be wondering what faith means. It's a bit of a funny word that it, it's a bit hard to understand what it means sometimes, but I'm going to tell you. Ready? Listening. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. So that means looking at the world around you. Now, we can't physically see God, but you can see him at work around you. You can see him in the miracles he performs, in the prayers that he answers, and even in nature. That's what he created after all. So in today's story, we're going to find out a bit more about what faith means and what it looks like to have faith. Roll the tape! Well, John, good, you're here. We're starting in two minutes. Oh, uh, okay. You, you haven't seen my glasses? No, have you? but you look great. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> hey, John. Script looks good today. Uh, really? I, I haven't read the script. Hey, you haven't seen my glasses, have you? No, I haven't. Where was the last place you looked for them? Well, I was sitting right here and getting ready for the show when I saw a little white rabbit run across the set, so I followed him down a hole where I got really small, then really tall, and there was a cat, a queen, and a caterpillar. And the next thing I know, I'm coming through the door and I don't have my glasses. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna let you look for them a little longer, but uh, your day's been weird enough already. Uh, your glasses are on your head. What? Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, 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 oh. All right, yes, let's get this show on the road. Uh, John, are you feeling okay? Yeah, great, now that I found my glasses. Why? No reason. Why is everybody looking at me like that? Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. Hello. And we are glad you're hanging out with us today. Yep. Hey, what is with the glasses? Whoa. whoa. Turn out my new toy that came in a cereal box. You're telling me those binoculars came in this box? No. No. But they're really? not binoculars, they're micro goggles. Ooh, my, what's a micro goggles? Yeah, they're, they're kind of like hands free microscopes. They help you focus in on tiny things so you can see them closer. Oh yeah, okay. There's apparently a secret message on the back of this that I need to use these to find out what it says. Oh, really? Cool. What's the secret message say? Mm, eat more cereal. Huh. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. Don't mind if I take a look? No. I guess it's kind of a subliminal marketing thing, huh? I don't think it's subliminal. Wow, man! Yeah. What are you saying? These things are useless. What? I'm sending them back. No, you don't have to send them back. Wait. wait. We could use them to play a game. Oh, great! It's time to play Random Magnified Things. Hey! Random Magnified Things. Okay, uh, this screen is about to show us random things as seen through your micro goggles. Okay. So, each image is magnified 100 times its normal viewing size. All we have to do is figure out what each thing is. Whoever gets the most right wins. Got it? Of course. Great, you go first. All right, hit me small. Hmm, that looks like, yeah. uh, let's see, 100 times. I'm gonna go with like, it looks like a, it looks like a trombone, but that's too big, right? I don't That'd know. That'd be the actual size. 
Like this is how big a trombone normally. Uh, it looks is. like a bridge to uh, me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go with a a thumbtack. Thumbtack? Yeah, the curvature of the thumbtack. All right, sure. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, let's see if you're right. Uh, oh, you were in the right, right arena. Yeah, office supplies. That's right. Okay, my turn. Show me tiny. Um. Okay. I, I think I know what this is. I would guess it was like a like a close up of like a grasshopper or something like yeah, that. But yeah. But there's a little red here. Mm-hmm. A little red and a little green. I'm gonna guess a strawberry. Ooh, strawberry it is. Brandon guesses strawberry. What is it? Uh, oh, oh, tomato. Darn it. Oh, that's right. All right, all right. Back to me. Macro machines go. Mmm. Oh, what in the world? <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait. You know? I know what this is. At first, I thought it was a lemon. Okay. But it's not. I know what it is. Because we're magnified. That's yeah. that is a pencil. That's what I think too. Yeah. yeah. Let's see, did he get it? Pencil! Yeah, you're right, that was very good. That's very right, good. Me all again. Right. It's teeny time. All right. Hoo-ah. Oh man, that's. Uh, I know what that is. I think I know what it is. It looks like my favorite uh, dessert. Is that an Oreo? It's an Oreo! Oh, I was right. Yes, you were. Mm, okay. I want okay. some milk. Yeah, me. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, it's my turn now, all right? Micro machines go! All right. All right. Oh, what, Ooh, what that is that? Is? I don't know. It could be celery. Maybe like fiber opti optic cable. It or... does look like that. But it's bunched up like. Oh, oh, what no, are you no, gonna no. Go it's, with? it's a, it's a, it's a toothbrush. Is it a toothbrush? You oh! betcha! Oh, well boom! Well okay, I got right, another one. Uh, Minutia, hit me! <laughs> oh man, oh, is that ooh. more fruit? It I don't know. Like... It looks like cracks in something. Oh, that is interesting. Like, a, oh my goodness, I. Uh... Almost looks like a nose. It does. <laughs> Man, that is really hard. I'm going to say it's a uh, it's a, it's a bowling ball. I don't know. I got a nothing. bowling ball. Yeah, so I can't. Okay, I don't know is it, it a is. bowling ball? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, it's a bottle cap. Oh, I see. Great, great. Wow. I don't think we can afford that damage. No, but I don't think so either. <laughs> hey, okay, let's move okay, quickly. Uh, there's one more. <laughs> this round is worth a million points. Is it? Why did we bother with all the other rounds? We're both playing on this one, so the okay. first person to correctly identify the image wins. Are you ready? Yeah, you're killing me, Smalls. All right, go ahead and hit. Mm, uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, fool's uh, gold. No, 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 uh, no. It's it, cornbread. Cornbread. Corn, corn, no, it's the uh, it's uh, the inside of an orange. It's, no, I no, it's I'm not. not very good with color. Shush. Okay. <laughs> Why it's, shush? Because I don't want you to win. It's, okay. it's a rock candy. Rock it's, candy. That's good. It's it's the inside of a a, a bee. Honey, a honeycomb? hive, honeycomb. Um, it's a sponge. It's a sponge. It's a. It's not a sponge. Uh, oh. This is going to take forever. Uh, is it? Is it the, the cereal honeycomb? Ooh. No. Is it a cereal? Uh, cereal. Ce it is cereal. It is. It's frosted flight. I don't know who got that one. I, really, I said cereal. You, you know said what? a cereal. We'll do five hundred thousand each. Okay, great. Okay, so great. I win. Yeah. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, what's going on? Why do you have binoculars on your face? They're not binoculars. Don't ask. Do you have something for us? Well, I do. It's all about folks who believe in something they couldn't see. Sounds perfect. They're micro goggles. Take it away, Kellen. You bet. Now, we can't actually see God, not even with micro goggles. But we can see the stories of people in the past who put their faith in God. And I've got some special people to help me tell some of their stories. It's time for another edition of... Kids Factive! The writer of the book of Hebrews reminds us of a guy named Abraham. What up? I'm Abraham. Well... Actually, when God called Abraham, he was already pretty old. Oh. What up? I'm Abraham. Better. <laughs> Abraham and his wife, Sarah. I'm Sarah, with an H, in case you were wondering. Yeah, that's good to know. Even though they were old, they didn't have any kids. We ain't got no kids. But God told us to leave our home and go to a new land. He's promised us. Plus, he told us we would have kids, he promised. 
Look at us. We're old. We're like uh, cassette players or rotary phones. Didn't you hear what I said? I said he promised. Oh, then let's go. So they followed God and they had kids and grandkids and great grandkids. We got kids now. Yeah, we do. Yes, they did. Just like God promised. God also promised Abraham that the whole world would be blessed because of Abraham's family. Abraham would not be alive to see the whole world being blessed, but he had faith that God would keep his promise. And now let's talk about one of Abraham's great, 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 great... Why not just say descendants? Yeah, that'd be easier. One of Abraham's descendants, Moses. Let my people go! Wait, before that, when Moses was a baby. Uh. He was rescued by his mother, who hid him in a basket on the banks of the Nile River. Whoa! Until he was found by Pharaoh's daughter. Oh, look at you, my sweet little mama! Baby? Yeah, so Moses was raised in the royal Egyptian family, even though he was actually an Israelite. The Israelites were slaves of the Egyptians. But one day, God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. I want you to bring the Israelites out of Egypt and into a land flowing with milk and honey. They are my people. As much as I love milk and honey, I'm not sure I'm the right guy for the job. I will be with you. Oh, well, all right then. Moses chose to stand with his own people, God's people, and he led them to freedom from slavery. Oh, you can do it now. Oh, <clears throat> let my people go! Mwah, beautiful. Thank you. The Israelites were free from slavery. And even though Moses didn't live to see the land flowing with milk and honey that God promised his people, Moses still had faith that God would keep his promise. Then there was David, who was anointed to be king of Israel. That's right, I'm anointed. What does anointed mean? It means you're not king yet. I'm still the king. So give me that crown. Oh, okay. Here you go, King Saul. Thank you. <laughs> you're not getting this back. I'm going to be the king, and then my son will be king, and then my son's son will be king, and then my son's son's son will be king, and then... Um. Sorry, King Saul. God promised David he would be the next king. He, he promised? Ah, uh, man. Uh. Thank you. David was the next king of Israel like God promised. And God promised that David's family would always have a king on the throne. And even though King David would not live to see the birth of his descendant, who would rule God's people forever, David had faith that God would keep his promise. These people, they lived thousands of years ago, and they didn't always see what God promised them. But God could see things they couldn't see. And guess what? We can see things they couldn't see. We know the whole world was blessed through Abraham's family because one of Abraham's descendants was Jesus. We know that the Israelites made it into the land flowing with milk and honey. Yes! Uh, I mean, <clears throat> praise God. And we know Jesus is also a descendant of King David. And even though we can't see forever, we can have faith that Jesus will always rule like a king because that's what God promised. The, the end. end. That was great, kids. Thank you so much for your help. That is so cool, Kellen. You don't actually have to see something to believe in it. That's right, which means you don't have to wear these anymore. Oh yeah, true. We can have faith in God just by reading about people from the past. Or there are even things we can see today that can help us believe in God. Such as? Well, maybe you can see God in things he's created. Or you can see how God works in the lives of people around you. That's true. Thanks, Kellen. No problem. I'll catch you guys next time. 
Okay, and I'll see you then. Okay. You can have faith in Jesus even if you can't see him. Even though you can't see him. Because there's no way. You can't see Jesus. So, But you can still have faith in him. We put faith in, in all sorts of things we don't fully understand. Like gravity or wind. So think about that when it comes to your relationship with Jesus. And if you're not sure what all of this means to you, ask someone who's already in a relationship with Jesus, like me or Josie or Kylie or even your parents, maybe. So I'm going to finish off there. And I would love for you guys to think about these three points as you pray right now. So I want you to thank God for sending his son down to die for us. I want you to ask God that God will strengthen your faith and that in the hard times we can trust in God even though we can't see him. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you've learned something new today. And guess what? We'll be able to see you all next week in person. See ya! Hey, parents. Well, I have some good news. We will be back together soon. With phase three restrictions coming into effect, we are starting back with our Sunday services in person on Sunday the 14th of June. With all of our church family in mind and to meet the new regulations, we'll be offering four meeting times for our church on a Sunday. You heard me, four. We will have services at 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 4 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. These services will look a little different. Uh, they're going to be shorter, 45-minute services with time afterwards to allow our church family to connect with each other because we recognise that while church online can be great, the thing that we're really missing is community, spending time with our church family. With a 100 attendee limit in our auditorium at each service, we'll be running Kids Church during all four services to allow families to spread out and pick a time that will suit you. Something a little different is that we will need you to pre-register each week to the service you would like to attend. I know that sometimes services will fill up and you may need to be patient and pick your second choice those weeks. But regardless of the time that we are together, this is an exciting time to connect again. And this won't be forever. We will adjust as soon as the restrictions change ahead of us. We will need to run Kids Church a little differently in this season, which means we won't be running our, or opening our baby's room or running our primary age small groups just yet. But I hope to be able to do very, very soon. What will it look like for now? Well, uh, we will have Woomera Kids Preschool for our two to four year olds, uh, Woomera Kids Kindy Pre-Primary for our Kindy Pre-Primary kids and a Woomera Kids Primary for our grades one to six. We have looked at all of our policies and procedures as well as our well church and well child policy. And I want you to know that we will be doing our very best to keep your family safe and healthy. I would love for you to have a read through our well child, well church policy, uh, which you can find on our church website under Connect Kids. This is also where you'll find the links to register for a service. You just need to follow the login process, select your preferred service time, register your kids first, and then those who will be attending the adult service. If there is not enough space for your family, select another service. If you cannot make it for whatever reason, uh, it's really important that you let us know so we can offer your space to, to others. If you have any troubles, let me know and I'd love to help you. I can't wait to see you very, very soon. Bye. Ooh.